Hello, my name is Katie Phillips, and I will be talking to you about the uncertainty avoidance theory, not to be confused with the uncertainty reduction theory, which is also discussed in the textbook. So just as an introduction, uncertainty is a state wherein outcomes and conditions are unknown or unpredictable. So just as an example, your boss tells you you've been put on a big project like huge. This could get you promoted if done well or possibly fired if done poorly. He tells you your partner in this project is Steve. You've never met Steve. How are you supposed to work on this immensely important project with someone you don't even know? Uncertainty avoidance is one of the five cultural dimensions created by Gert Hofstede. Gert Hofstede is a Dutch social psychologist and is known as the founder of comparative intercultural research. According to the Hofstede Center's website, Hofstede is globally recognized for having developed the first model of dimensions of national culture, thus establishing a new paradigm for taking account of cultural elements in international economics, communication, and cooperation. Hofstede said the fundamental issue is how society deals with the fact that time runs only one way. People are caught in the reality of the past, present, and future, and we have to live with the uncertainty because the future is unknown and always will be. I really like the way Douglas Hawkes, a sociology professor, stated uncertainty avoidance in the lecture for study.com. He said some people are more comfortable with uncertainty than others, and uncertainty avoidance is the degree to which individuals participate in certain behaviors to stay in comfortable situations. Some characteristics of high uncertainty avoidance people, they are conservative, xenophobic, express their emotions, have a weak interest in politics. Ritualized. They think teachers have all the answers, and they have traditional gender roles. Hofstede found that high uncertainty avoidance societies socialize their people into trying to beat the future. Because the future is, for the most part, unpredictable, these societies have a higher level of anxiety in people. These people are more nervous, emotional, and aggressive. Such societies also have institutions that try and create security and avoid risk. Some characteristics of low uncertainty avoidance people, they're open to change and innovation. They are tolerant of diversity, suppress their emotions, have a high interest of politics, avoid ritualization, teachers are allowed to say, I don't know, and they have fewer gender roles. According to Hofstede, some societies socialize their members into accepting this uncertainty and not becoming upset by it. These people tend to accept each day as it comes. They will take risks easily. They will not work as hard. They will be rel relatively tolerant of behavior and opinions different from their own because they do not feel threatened by them. In these societies, people have a natural tendency to feel relatively secure. These list of characteristics comes from an Andrews University intercultural business relations professor who talks about this theory in his class, as well as Hofstede's book. This just shows how Hofstede's theory can be used in many fields, including sociology, psychology, communication, journalism, and business. For high uncertainty avoidance cultures, there are ways of creating security. There are three ways of creating security, technology, law, and religion. Through technology, we protect ourselves from risks. We build houses, dams, power stations, and so on, which are meant to give us a feeling of security. Through law, all kinds of rules and institutions, we protect ourselves from the unpredictability of human behavior. The laws and rules are meant to reduce deviant behaviors and opinions. The third way of creating a sense of security is religion. This sense includes secular religions and ideologies. 
even scientists included. All religions, in some way, make uncertainty tolerable. These contain a message that is beyond uncertainty that helps us to accept the uncertainty of today because we interpret experiences in terms of something bigger and more powerful. Uncertainty Avoidance Index is a measurement used so countries can be compared to one another. A low score on the Uncertainty Avoidance Index indicates the people in the country are more comfortable with ambiguity, more entrepreneurial, more likely to take risks, and less dependent on structure rules. A high score on the index means the people desire more stability, more structured rules and social norms, and are less comfortable taking risks. Some examples of countries with low uncertainty avoidance scores are the United States, England, India, China, Singapore, Denmark, and Ireland. Countries with high uncertainty avoidance scores include Italy, Korea, Mexico, Belgium, Russia, Greece, and Portugal. And this is the chart that Gert Hofsted created to graph the Uncertainty Avoidance Index of each country. So in conclusion, the Uncertainty Avoidance Theory can affect communication. The Uncertainty Avoidance Theory helps us understand how people react in situations that might make them feel uncomfortable. By understanding that people will react differently, it makes it easier for us, as communicators, to interact with them. Let's say you're meeting your girlfriend's parents for the first time. Before you go over there, your girlfriend tells you that her parents are very religious and like to plan out their lives. So you can assume that they are high uncertainty avoidance people. You will then know to avoid certain topics like gay marriage and so on because it directly negates their beliefs and they are not open to different opinions. So which one are you, high or low? Think back to the beginning of the presentation. Your boss gives you a huge assignment and then gives you a partner whom you've never even met. What do you do? Do you become panicky, overwhelmed, and nervous? Then you're a high uncertainty avoidance person. Do you assure yourself that Steve is more than qualified for this assignment and just focus on what you have to do? Then you're a low uncertainty avoidance person. And here are the sources that I used for this presentation.